So this video is going to be a re little refresher for those of you that have probably already done um, Inventor, but just want to refresh on how to create views in it again. So first I'm going to go to Open, and I'm going to activate my project. So Projects, Browse, and I'm going to find where that project was, and I had it on my desktop. IDW Demo, there it is. So it's got the check mark, it's an activated project, hit done. Um, so I have a template that I've created that I've done some editing to the, the title block definition. So for those of you that are in my classes, make sure you use this. Um, I'll do another video for those of you that aren't in my classes to see what I've done to make this one work. So I'm going to do that and hit open. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and hit a base view. And so I'm going to pick a part and say open. And so as I move my mouse around, you can see the part follows it. I can also click on the different view names here. And those correspond with the view, the view cube that I had in the part. So it, it looks like that's kind of small. So maybe I'll change this to two to one. And that looks a little bit big. So maybe I'll do like um, a, a one and a half. So I could do 1.5. I could also do three to two as a fraction, or I could do three to two as a ratio. It doesn't really matter how you put it in. So I want to do that. So I'm going to click here for that view. And it actually takes me into the project did views now. So I can pick a top view here, a right side, um, left view, there's nothing there. So maybe a bottom view. So you can see I get an isometric here, another isometric, looking at it from the bottom side. So I'm just going to use that isometric there. And I can keep adding views as long as I want. But when I'm done, right click, hit create. You can see it's turned my views into to normal views, thick lines for objects, thin lines for hidden lines, my <coughs> isometric views over here. If I double click on it, I can turn it to be shaded by clicking on the, the button right here. If I click a view and drag it, so if I go kind of drag moving over, as soon as I get that little red line to about there, just before I get to the actual object, I can click anywhere in there to drag the view. If I go inside of that and I click, I'm just going to get to a selection window. So I can go there and drag it. You can see it keeps them lined up because it knows that the view should be lined up. So if I grab this view, it'll only let it move side to side. It won't let me go up and down with it. Same thing with this, it'll only let it go up and down, not side to side. So I'm going to delete that view. So I just couldn't click inside the view to, to select it, hit delete, and say OK. And I can give that a little bit more space. You can also see that my title block is filled in with my initials, a title of this, a drawing number, and that's because on the part I've gone into the I properties, and under summary the title fills the, in the title area, the subject fills in the material the author fills in the drawn by initials, the part number is the part number, and also usually you want to do the description because that fills in the bill materials or the parts list. So now I need to dimension this, so I'm going to go to annotate. There's two ways. First I can just go to dimension and pick a line and come out and put it in. Or just like I dimension a part when I create it. I can also go to retrieve select a view and now hit select dimensions and it'll come it'll bring up the dimensions that were used to create the part so like here this dimension I actually put a tolerance on when I was creating it so I can just pick a few of these that I want to keep say okay now I can click on them and drag them around so you can see it kind of drags back and forth if I kind of move inside the line moves it out. If I move outside the lines, it moves just the text. So if I right click on it, options, arrows inside, and take that arrows inside 
selection off, now the text can go inside and it can pop the arrows out. So for me, I think that looks uh, just looks a little cleaner. So, and also, as you're dragging your dimensions around, you'll notice that you'll get to points. So it's so watch the dimensions black and turns dotted. It's black and turns dotted. So if you want to evenly space things, just go to the second time it turns dotted or have all of them going to the first dotted instance. And now you're going to have equally spaced dimensions. Um, ooh, here you can see we don't have a gap. That's because when it was drawn a dimension to this line, but I can just grab the little green dot there, bring it up, bring that out. There we go. So that's how we do that. Um, if we wanted to change the paper, the paper size, just right click on the sheet, edit sheet, and I can change the size right here. So I hope this is enough to get you started and I'll see you in the next video.